going on guys? The uh, next project I'm going to be doing on my 1992 Dodge W250 is we're going to be fixing a broken odometer. <clears throat> so I noticed um, probably a couple months back that uh, just as I was filling up the gas station actually because I keep track of my mileage in a little book, um, I noticed that that one trip in particular, and I usually fill up when I'm getting closer to empty, that one trip in particular didn't have so many kilometers on it. And then I noticed after that, uh, while I was driving on the highway, that my speedometer was working, but my, my odometer and my trip odometer were not rolling over at all. They weren't, they weren't spinning in the, <clears throat> in the gauge cluster. So, so what I did from that point, um, the one point that I noticed was I started to keep track of my mileage using my GPS, which I'll show you here in a minute. Let me just turn my light on. So I started keeping track of my mileage on my GPS. And I'm thinking I probably didn't travel more than like 100 kilometers or so with without noticing really how much I had gone. But since then, this on the right here, I've been keeping track so that way when I go to fix it, um, maybe I could somehow roll it over to get back on track to where I was. So I've gone about 18, 1900 kilometers since then. <clears throat> um, so here, it's been stuck on 262656 for quite a while. Um, so we're going to rip out <clears throat> the gauge cluster and replace a couple of small gears. As I've, from what I've been reading online has been the common problem. So these couple of gears here um, is common for these one or one of these to um, get old, brittle, and crack, um, and then your odometer will stop working. So I got this from Southern Electronics. Um, this is online, and the price on these guys were. Pretty pricey just for a small little plastic gear, but um, that was pretty much the only spot I could find them. So we'll dig into that and hopefully uh, this solves the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, gauge cluster out. The easiest way to do this, um, from experience, I've taken this out a few times. Um, start with taking off this panel here, four Phillips head screws. Then after that, drop the column a little bit. There's two, I believe it's either half inch or seven sixteenths bolts that hold on the column and that'll be able to drop a little bit. And then you can pull out all the Phillips head screws across the top. I think there's a couple more on the second layer here. Um, to get this wood grain panel out, um, it's easier to have that column down a little bit so it can just come right out um, real easy. And here's after the column has been dropped a little bit. Now here you can see we've got a gap in there which we'll be able to uh, allow me to bring the, the wood grain panel down a little bit and give me access to take that out easily. There's just those two 7 16 deep socket is what I used. It was just the uh, seven screws across the top is what I had, including the two for the map light. And then uh, what I did was I pulled out on the bottom and then uh, wiggled it out at the top because there's a whole bunch of uh, just little, um, what do you call those things on the top? And then I'll just be able to pull that right out and then uh, set it in a safe place so it doesn't crack. Then we have access to the uh, gauges. Keep in mind before you pull this straight out, there's one harness that's plugged into the uh, information center and then the one light here for the four wheel drive light that just pulls straight back. Okay, that dash panel's out. Now we have access to the gauge pod. Um, there's three across the top, um, two on the sides here and one more down in there all phillips head screws um there's i believe either one or two harnesses connected to the back of that so be careful when you're pulling that straight back and disconnect those sensors before you uh, yank on anything so there was two connectors and you just pull those straight back on the gauge pod now we can go uh, work on the gauge pod okay next thing we're going to do is remove these eight t20 screws and Remove that clear plastic and be careful not to um, crack it like this one is here. <laughs> and then uh, place it in a safe location. 
Next, you'll want to remove this black cover, which should just lift off after that clear plastic cover and also put it in a safe location. Okay, now that that cover is off, um, be careful just on the back of those. There's some foam that might be uh, sticky or something like that. So just uh, be uh, weary of that. And next thing you're gonna do is pull off of the three T20 screws, one, two, and three, holding on the speedometer. Um, so you can pull it off. Okay, so I got the speedometer out. Um, just note that it was a little bit more difficult to pull it out on this side. You kind of have to, what I did was I set my fingers on here and then pried back a little bit on the uh, speedometer backside because these three connections here were uh, pretty hard to get off. So I kind of just pried up it and then it gave way and then you just pull it straight out. Now that we've done that, we can set the rest of the gauges aside and flip the odometer over. Um, just be careful not to uh, put too much pressure on the trip odometer reset button. And now we will remove these four Phillips head screws. Okay, now we're gonna flip the gauge back over on this side and remove the four screws on the face of the gauge. Okay, now that we've got those screws undone, um, this is the motor right here. We're gonna lift up, uh, if I had another finger, that plastic piece on top so we can have access to those two screws and then we'll be able to take the motor out. So like this, I've got the plastic piece propped up and now I'll undo these two uh, Phillips head screws. Okay, at this point, we're gonna wanna pull the whole circuit board and motor straight off of the shaft that it's on. Okay, so we slid that straight off. Um, I found that this blue wire was kind of in the way, so I had to pull it back over one of the, uh, the pieces of the circuit board on the other side, um, just to give me a little bit more room to slide that straight off without um, pulling on it too hard. Um, and now here's the gear assembly here, and we'll just pull that straight back and off. Okay, so that uh, gear assembly just pulled straight off. Um, it appears here that, oh, that little gear fell off. Um, all of my gears are okay, so um, I'm gonna have to find out what the actual problem is. That little gear was just on there, like, like that. So, um, that is a common problem if your gears are broken to be one of these. I might as well replace them while I'm at it. Um, since I have the gears, but I'm gonna have to try and dig into this a little deeper. Um, I do have another spare set of gauges, thankfully, so I might try and um, replace this circuit board and see if uh, that might be the issue. Um, we'll see. All right, so I've dug into my second set of gauges. Um, and so here's just my second gauge pod and stuff. Um, I dug into them, opened them up, and my original plan uh, to fix this, so here's my old original set. That's the original ones um, on the right. And then these were the spare set that I had. Um, I got this set of gauges when I did my transmission swap from automatic to manual. I believe the truck was a 93, it was either a 92 or a 93, but I got that set of gauges off that truck. It was a manual truck. This was an automatic truck when I got it. Um, I needed that little thing down here. And anyways, this set of gauges after tearing it apart, it is a little bit different. As you can see here on this one, um, see how those are spaced a little bit more and you can actually see the gears in those. Um, and then in this one, they're not as spaced out and you can't see the gears and there's a little um, thin plastic cover covering those numbers. Um, and I, my original plan was to try and replace on the original ones just this circuit board. And hopefully it would be like something that like that little motor is broken or this. Um, I don't really know too much about electronics. So I wasn't really gonna fidget around with it and just replace the circuit board with another one that I had. But I dug into it and the back side is totally different. Circuit board is completely different. 
So what I've opted to do instead is um, what my mileage was on this uh, set of gauges plus what I had missed. Um, I'd taken this one apart and got it to the mileage that it's supposed to be at. Um, I'd already tested this set of gauges in the truck and it worked. So that tells me that this speedometer is good to go. So I just went ahead and changed over the mileage to the correct mileage and now I'm going to have to reinstall it in the truck and it should be, should, should work. So, um, if your gears aren't broken in your odometer and you don't have a spare set of gauges, then you might be out of luck unless you know electronics really well. Um, maybe recommend sending it to a, a sp speedo shop or whatever to get them repaired, check online. Um, if not, go picking through the junkyard and find yourself a truck with another set of gauges. So I'll go ahead and reinstall this and hopefully it works. Okay, so I've set them in the truck now just for a quick test. Um, so I placed it in just without the glass in the background just to test it. Um, plugged it in, we can test with the lights now. All my LEDs are working. Um, I'll shut that off and then I'll show you a quick test of what I've done to Make sure that my speedometer and my odometer are working. So underneath the truck, and we can do this without the truck running, I've pulled out my um, VSS. That's pulled out my VSS, which is this thing. And that sensor hooks up to the back of the transfer case. And bolts on right there. And this is just <laughs> hooked up to my drill here. So when I push on the drill, we can take a look at my speedometer and get a better view. There. Oh, sorry, key's gotta be on. Okay, so my key's on. And my drill's gone. So 150, 160 kilometers an hour, and the odometer is rolling over. So there we go. Um, that fixes that problem, so I can bundle everything back up, knowing that my speedometer and my odometer are working, along with everything else in my gauges. All right, so I've buttoned everything back up. Finish the install of the dash bezel and everything else. So check, quick check of the lights. Everything's working. Um, I installed even a new LED since I had it out in the uh, four wheel drive light position. There we go. And everything's working. So um, if you're having problems with your odometer not working, but your speedometer is working, um, this may be a solution to your problem for the gears. But um, other than that, if your gears aren't stripped, then you're probably gonna have to get yourself uh, another set of gauges. So thanks for watching, hopefully this helps, and stay tuned for some more videos.